Hey folks, it's Kellen Nitro from Nitro Maniac TV's Wrestling Channel, and this is my take on Death Before Dishonor 2018. From the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, the event took place on Friday, September 28th, 2018. Now at the start, I saw somewhere online that this event had kind of the all-in effect on it. Uh, what that basically means is that Ring of Honor itself... Uh, looking at booking bigger venues for these pay-per-views they got coming up. Um, it might be a direct effect of that. Uh, I know that the Orleans Arena is quite larger than Sam's Town, which is the uh, arena or entertainment complex that they were using prior to uh, this event in Las Vegas. I'm not sure what the crowd was like, so if you were at the card and you're watching this, uh, if you can get back to me in the comments below if the entire building looked like it was filled on both levels or not. I know they had an LED ring with the uh, Death Before Dishonor stuff uh, going across it like major arenas have and that stuff. Uh, if it looked like it was a, f a filled house up on top of the second level there and that stuff, go right ahead. I know there were some camera shots where it looked like those seats weren't being used or not. Uh, I know from what they showed on the camera that the bottom level looked like it was pretty well full. So um, I'm not sure if they got 10 grand for an attendance for that event, but uh, maybe six to eight, maybe, which is still really good. So, so if you were at that event and you're checking out this video and checking out my channel for the first time, please feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think the uh, crowd count was and if there were indeed people up on the second level there at the Orleans Arena. Second observation, the commentary team of Caprice Coleman and Ian Riccoboni. Uh, Ian's really growing on me since All In, uh, well, even before All In and that stuff as, as the year was going on. Uh, you can go back and take a look at some of the Ring of Honor Nitro takes that I've done prior to All In. But I thought he did an excellent job at All In, and um, I think he's got a, a, a great voice, and he's shaping into his own on Ring of Honor to make it his own thing, kind of like how Kevin Kelly made it his own thing, and then how the great voices that they've had in Ring of Honor made it their thing in the past. You know, the Dave Prezaks of the world, and uh, Lenny Leonard's, and etc. Going way, way back with that. Um, oh, by the way, as I record it, this was something I think I saw online, and this was like a, the 13th anniversary of Joe versus Kabashi or something like that. Um, Maybe someday down the line I'll take a look at that event. But, I, I mean, there was a tape trader's delight back in the day. Regardless, Ian Riccoboni, uh, I think, has got a great voice. Uh, Caprice Coleman, uh, kind of, I hate to say it, you know, but kind of more like RH's version of Percy Watson a little bit on NXT, where um, it's kind of, and I think because, you know, Colt was wrestling in a match on his card, that's where they had um, Caprice walk in and, 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 and kind of be the, the, the second guy in a two-man booth. But uh, I don't know. As I've, I think Caprice still is working towards it a little bit. But uh, there were some funny spots. He had some funny lines throughout the, the, the pay-per-view. So it all wasn't that bad. I, I think that uh, Ring of Honor might have something with him. But for right now, I think he's just kind of ROH is Percy Watson, if you will. Now to the card itself. The opening match on the card was Kenny King versus Jushin Liger, and Kenny King defeated Jushin Liger in 12 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, some great psychology here in this match, where, and Kenny's been kind of teasing a heel turn, you know, with his involvement with Austin Aries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But man, um, the way that that unveiled at the end of the match was, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty great. And I mean, King offering a handshake and then going right to the spine buster for the pin. Uh, not bad. It was all right. Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship. This was kind of a rematch, a little bit of all in, uh, with the exception of swap out Scorpio Sky and put in uh, Christopher Daniels in that role, who took on Stephen Amell at all in. But this was the addiction that was, uh, of course, Kazarian and Christopher Daniels with Scorpio Sky in their corner, taking on the Briscoes for the ROH uh, Tag Team Championship. Uh, this was a hard-hitting affair. I liked the match that they had at All In just a little bit more than this one. Uh, I thought that the pace was a little bit too slow, but it's just my opinion, my liking to it. I kind of like the fast, roughhouse, strong style style uh, of match. And the Briscoes retained, so um, solid match, solid opening hour so far of the card. 
Women of Honor Championship match. He had Sumi Sakai, the champion, take on Tennille Dashwood. And uh, this match was pretty highly touted going into it. Uh, they had the girls in on All In. Uh, well, Tennille was, along with Mandy Leon, really hyping this match uh, with Sumi. And uh, the package they had built before this and that stuff that ran on Ring of Honor TV was actually fairly entertaining. This was a, a match that I looked on on paper and then checked out a couple of the uh, packages and that stuff that had been posted through Ring of Honor's various social media accounts and that stuff. And it, it did the job. It kind of hyped up the match really well. The ending of the match was really good with uh, Dashwood hitting a power bomb, but then Sumi Sakai transitioning that out of that into an armbar submission in which Tennille had no choice but to tap after valiantly trying to fight out of it. Um, and so Sumi retains the Women of Honor Championship. And this was my first uh, real chance to see Sumi as the Women of Honor Champion in Ring of Honor. And uh, they've done a really good job of kind of giving her the Kana treatment a little bit. Or the, uh, sorry, the Asuka Kana treatment. Whoops, sorry, Freudian slip there. Uh, big Shimmer fan, by the way. Uh, <laughs> But uh, the Asuka treatment is what I'm trying to say, is that they have uh, uh, Sumi as this kind of unstoppable force that's wreaking havoc throughout the division, and that uh, she's got the belt and nobody can topple her right now. So it, it, it's very, um, it's like watching NXT from a couple of years ago, where they got that. It's like, hmm, where did they get that idea from? And I mean, there's been some reports, like I know Osanka on 411 Mania said that, um, Sumi winning kind of deflated the crowd a little bit and that stuff. I mean, I can kind of see it upon review that it did, but um, I think right now it doesn't hurt at all having Sumi Sakai as the Women of Honor champion. Uh, they just need to get a bunch of quality contenders in there um, going forward. I mean, you have your homegrown talent and that stuff, the uh, Mandy Leones of the world and, and and such, but I mean, you got to see if you can try and steal away uh, like a... Uh, Tessa Blanchard for a pay-per-view or somewhat to maybe give Sumi a real